generation of Israelites that they will become wars in their lives, in their heart, in their spirit, in their character, worse than before Jesus came. We're looking at Second Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 20 there. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. We're looking at Revelation chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 2. Revelation 18, reading from verse 2. It says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is falling, is falling, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean, hateful bird. A cage for the unclean. A cage for uncleanness. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. If we remain in the uncleanness of Babylon, the uncleanness of the world, the uncleanness of society, when they are judged, the same judgment will be inflicted on us. But to escape from the judgment of Babylon, of the world, society, we come out from among them. Point number two now is the promise of cleansing by the Lord. The promise of cleansing. The uncleanness is there in the world. The uncleanness is there in society. The uncleanness is there in the offices. The uncleanness is there in the marketplace. Almost everywhere you turn, whether it's a village or a city, the uncleanness is there. But now we have the promise that the Lord himself will cleanse us. Ezekiel chapter 36, reading from verse 25. Ezekiel 36, 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Then He's been talking about something else. Then he says, if this happens, that happens, that happens, then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. If you have the desire for cleansing, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. If you have a heart towards the Lord and you want God, what God wants, for the reason God wants it. If you desire God for the reason of glorifying him, but you see that in yourself, you do not have the strength, you do not have the power, you do not have the ability, human ability to carry out everything God wants and say, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? out of this body of uncleanness then will i sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean when god does it you will be clean when you do it by yourself you will not be clean enough when a human being does it you will not be clean enough when those who are trying to control your life and they take the responsibility out of your hand and they say, we will clean you up. 
they won't do it properly. They won't do it perfectly. They'll even introduce some other things that will make you more unclean. But when the God of heaven, when he is the one that you are allowed to fulfill this promise in your life, he says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness. When you do it by yourself, you pick and choose. That filthiness is even hurting me. That filthiness is making my, you know, the people who love me and appreciate and honor me, is making them to disrespect me. That kind of filthiness is push aside. But all the forms of filthiness that you take pleasure in, that you gain some things from, other kinds of filthiness that uh, you feel, I think, uh, you know, that will favor me if I go in with the director. Yeah, I know it's some filthy, but it may earn me promotion. It may earn me double gain. Then you keep that kind of unfilthiness. When you try to clean up your cell, you're partial. You take off one, you retain others. When God does the cleansing, he cleanses you from all filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Let the church say amen. amen. Verse 37, verse 37 tells us, Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. To do it for them, to cleanse them from all uncleanness, to cleanse them from all filthiness, to cleanse them from all their idols. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the purging and prayer for cleansing. Number two, the preservation of the perception of conscience. Number three, the purpose and passion for conviction. Look at number one. Number one is the purging and prayer for cleansing. In second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now, Second Corinthians chapter 7, from verse 1. I've been there for these promises dearly beloved what promises the promises he gave uh, in chapter 6 what did he say in chapter 6 it says that unequal yoke makes us unclean joining Belial and Christ makes us unclean joining the right and the wrong the white and the black makes us unclean. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch no unclean thing. Then I will receive you, having that promise, dearly beloved, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, having that promise, and I will be your God, says the Lord having all those promises then it says having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh then the filthiness of the flesh flesh and flesh relating together filthiness let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit 
perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure. Having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Anybody can profess, I belong to God. The Lord knoweth them that are his. I'm a member of the family of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. We can shout it to the a roof of the, uh, to the top of the roof. But the Lord knoweth them that are his. We can, you know, give testimony. We can spread the testimony. We can blast it forth everywhere. I am of God, but by God, actions are waged. By God, hearts are searched. By God, he knows all that are in the book of life. He knows the people who are converted who are born again, who are children of God, who are cleansed, who are pure, who are made holy. It says, the Lord knoweth them who are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, it tells us, if a man therefore Perch himself. There are people who have left all the responsibility of their Christian life in the hands of another person. But if a man therefore perch himself, there are people who have left all their Christian lives the cleansing and the purging and the purifying. They leave it in the hands of whoever. And they say, well, if it's wrong, so and so will tell me. Why don't you tell yourself? Don't you read the Bible? Don't you know the word of God? If it's wrong, our coordinator will let me know. If it's wrong, our pastor will call me and say, this is wrong. And they give the responsibility of their being converted of their being consecrated, of their being sanctified, of their being holy, they give the responsibility of their getting to heaven in the hands of another person. So if we're doing it and he doesn't talk about it, we're all right. No, you're not all right. If the Lord knows that you have made up your mind, that is how to live, that's how you are going to live, it takes away even your teacher from you. Or it takes you away from your teacher that you do, do some clean things. And nobody wants to talk to you anymore. But if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and need for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Verse 22. In verse 22, flee also youthful lust. One last, they did do that. Not just walk away, that's good, not good enough. Not just keep away from, that's good, not good enough flee. You see that that thing is unclean. You see that that thing will bring you back into the mud. It will bring you back into filthiness. It will bring you back the remembrance of the old sinful, unclean, unrighteous life. Flee also youthful loss, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord 
out of a pure heart. Look at number two here. Number two is the preservation of the perception of conscience. The conscience has eyes to see. You perceive, you understand by the tenderness of the conscience. And it says you must preserve that perception of the conscience. We're told in First Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 5. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Now, the edge of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith of faith of faith verse 19 in verse 19 holding faith and a good conscience which some have been put away concerning faith have made a shipwreck when you silence your conscience you make a shipwreck of your faith when you sear your conscience as with a hot iron, you make a shipwreck of the faith. When you abandon the understanding and the stirring up and the warning of your conscience, eventually you'll make a shipwreck of your faith. When you lay as a man without conscience anymore. There's nothing on the inside that reminds you of Scripture. There's nothing on the inside that reminds you of the judgment to come. There is nothing that makes you fear doing evil and you are deadening your conscience. You make a shipwreck of your faith. In Acts chapter 24, Reading from verse 16, Acts 24, verse 16, and herein do I exercise myself, exercise myself, a hand that is not exercised will soon become dead, steel, a conscience that is not exercised will soon be completely dead. But Paul the Apostle said, Herein do I exercise myself to have always, to have always, to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Preserve that perception of your conscience. Number three here. Number three the purpose and passion for conviction. A person, anyone in life, who is going to go forward spiritually, morally, personally, a slave to something that will destroy her future, her destiny. If you're going to walk straight, in a straight path if you're going to be a person that has the mind of christ and you live by the mind of christ you will be a man of conviction anywhere you are before you meet a new friend you have already decided this how i'm going to live my life so that new friend cannot derail you, cannot make you go astray. Before you get to any place of influence, before they bring the influence already, you have a conviction that this is the way to live. My heart will be clean. My mind will be clean. My soul will be clean. My spirit will be clean. Before you meet anyone, anyone here, anyone there, anyone anywhere, if you're going to keep your experience of salvation, sanctification, and you're going to keep your expression of consecration, you'll be a man, a woman of conviction. That's what happened to Daniel in Daniel chapter 1. 
reading there from verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of himself with the portion of the king's meat. No, with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the priests of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Before they got to Babylon, he had conviction. Before they were chosen to study what they were to study, he had conviction. You know why? Many of our children, they go to college, they go to university, and then by the time they come back, and you say, my daughter, what happened to you? And she begins to smile and say, please, this not laughing matter. I'm crowd they went, what they went. But Daniel was a man of conviction. When I was in Judah, conviction. Came to Babylon, convic conviction. And so, if you're going to be a man, a woman of conviction, you have that at the moment you're born again and your purpose in your heart. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the priest of the eunuchs, of the priest of the eunuchs, that he might not defile himself. I'm himself. I'm shy. I cannot talk to the shy. I cannot talk to the prince of the eunuchs. In my heart, that it overcomes shyness. It overcomes cowardice. It overcomes the pain that might come upon you. The point is, have a biblical conviction. Have a convicted conviction have a conviction that you will not compromise your faith and that purpose of heart will be there we're looking at psalm 17 verse 3 psalm 17 verse 3 thou hast proved my heart thou hast visited me in the night thou has tried me and shall find nothing, nothing wrong, nothing unclean. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. That's a man of conviction. Psalm 15 from verse 1. Psalm 15, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, In whose eyes a vile person is contained, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. Look at this. He that sweareth to his soon heart and change it not. That's a man, that's a woman of conviction who shall dwell in thy holy hill, who will get to heaven, who will abide in heaven, who will forever be with the Lord in heaven. He that sweareth to his soon heart. When at the time of prayer, Lord, I have heard your word. I repent of all the past vacillations, indecisiveness. Now, I commit myself unto you and I surrender absolutely unto you. Lord, whatever, whatever comes, whatever goes, whatever happens, whatever does not happen, I lay everything on your altar i will not look back 
I will not go on your altar. I will not look back. I will not go back. I will not compromise. Whether maybe a time you are not married yet, Lord, this is the direction I will go in life. I will serve you. I will serve you. My whole life will be holiness unto the Lord. Now, you're married. And your wife was not there. Yours, that's against my commitment. It's against my, com my uh, consecration. It's against my conviction. He sweareth to his own heart and he changes not. As you begin to work, you find that the people there, they come to you and they say, this is how we do the work over here. This is how we put the people life too. I'm even a worker in deeper life. But as for place of work, this is how we do it here. Now, since we have the same church, I am doing it. You are also like me, deeper life. Come on, do it. He that swear to his own heart and changeth not. You are not there when I was converted. Maybe you are deeper life. You are not there when I laid everything on the altar. I will serve the Lord faithfully, wholeheartedly, without cutting corners. I made that consecration. I have that conviction. Any other person who comes, they call himself deeper life, higher life, holier life, broader life, whatever. Here is where I stand. That's a man of conviction. He that swear it to his own heart and changes not. We'll come to point number three. Point number three, the privilege of cleaving to the Lord. The privilege of cleaving to the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter four, reading from verse four. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day what keeps us alive alive spiritually alive purposefully alive for eternity is because we cleave unto the Lord ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God alive Every one of you this day. Three things we're looking at. Number one, personally leave all uncleanness and cleave to Christ. Number two, permanently leave uncharitableness and cleave to Christ likeness. Number three, perseveringly leave the uncommitted and cleave to our captain. The point is this, before you can cleave to someone new, you have to leave someone old. Before you can cleave to the present, present reality, you have to leave the past, the past. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. It's a principle we're drawing out of that. You leave the flesh of the world that will not take you to heaven. And you cleave unto the Lord because you want to get to heaven. You leave something before you can cleave to someone. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and they twain shall be for one flesh. That's cleaving. You cleave to Christ. You have the same mind as Christ. The same vision as Christ, the same perception as Christ, the same driver as Christ, the same zeal as Christ, you become one with as Christ, the same zeal 
a Christ, you become one with Christ as you cleave together. It says, the twain shall be one place, so then there no more twain, but one flesh. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, what therefore God sunder, but we are now applying it to Christ, that the Christian is joined to Christ, and you are cleaving to Christ, and watch God in his grace, in his goodness, in his mightiness, in his mind, what God had joined together, let nothing unclean, let nothing on earth, let no gain, let no promise of the world, let no man of the world, let no woman of the world put asunder. He has joined you to Christ, 31, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh verse 32 in verse 32, the uncharitable and cleave to christ likeness permanently leave the uncharitable and cleave unto christ likeness romans chapter 14 reading from verse 15 and behave with faith and faithfulness look at verse 23 in verse 23 and he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith for whatsoever is not of faith is sin whatever you do also so toward even as he would that's how to be christ-like what will christ do what will christ say how will christ express himself how will christ love he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he would that there is and when you start a casual friendship relationship with anyone watch if they are uncommitted to christ uncommitted to the canon of scripture uncommitted to what we have learned and what we have known they are still casual friends don't allow it to go beyond that point don't allow an uncommitted man nine it says but we see jesus who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crouch or glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, for it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons into glory. Many sons into glory. That's his goal, that's his purpose. That the result of his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, he wants to bring every one of us to glory. And if you are committed to those casual, intimate, influential, uncommitted people, they'll drag you back. They'll drag you back onto the captain of our salvation, bringing many sons into unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering look at verse 11 in verse 11 for both he that sanctifies 
and they who are sanctified are all of one. Cleave to him. Stay with him. Abide in him. Be so glued unto him that it will be impossible for any man, anything to say grace. You will have the grace to leave everything you have to leave including that uncommitted man, uncommitted lady, uncommitted woman, and you cleave unto Christ, the bridegroom, unto Christ, the conqueror. He was glad, the pastor glad, that's not my goal, that's not my business. He's sad, he's glad, that's his... Allow me to use the word. That's his cup of tea. That's, that's his own lookout. Glad. What am I doing? Making any, any pastor glad. I want to be glad myself. And whatever I want to do, I do. To be glad by myself. I'm not here to make any pastor glad. Ah, you're not walking in the footsteps of the faithful or cleaving unto the Lord. Who, when he came, and I've seen the grace of God. What we see makes us either glad or sad. When he had seen the grace of God, he was glad and, exhort, and exhorted them all that were purpose of heart. They will cleave unto the Lord. And I pray you will cleave unto the Lord. Bridge the gap. Whatever is separating you from the Lord, remove all those things so that with purpose of heart, you cleave unto the Lord. And the Lord, Lord in prayer, rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We've heard quite a lot today that the Lord himself will clean you up, cleanse you up. Now the Lord himself will do that great work of grace in your heart. Real conversion, real consecration, real commitment and real conviction. And you live by that conviction. Open your mouth, talk to the Lord in prayer. To the newcomers, to those here to get converted, to those, all, to those of us who have been working with the Lord for some time, we've seen the area that the Lord has been speaking unto us. First, it is necessity of conversion. Conversion comes when that unclean act becomes completely cleansed. Conversion comes when the Lord transforms the heart, changes the heart, removes the law for sin, the law for dirty things, the law for the things that God hates. The law of polluted things in our heart. And the people who are unclean before the Lord, why don't we deal with that uncleanness today? And let us be sincere with ourselves. Let us be truthful with ourselves. We can't hide anything from God. He knows the state of our heart. He knows the secret things, the secret sins.
He knows the evils we perpetrate. Even the others may not know. But he wants to clean it up this morning if you give him chance. He wants to clean you inwardly. Make your life acceptable unto him. If our heart is unclean, our life is unacceptable unto God. May be outwardly good, outwardly nice. That is not what God is looking for. He's looking for inward cleansing. Those who are heartily good, but inwardly, if you are not in this morning, you will change that art. He has done it for many of us, he will do your. And if you have been converted in the past, but gradually, gradually, we have lost it. We can make our right, uh, way right with God. The Lord wants a pure heart, a clean heart. Let's set it right and set it with God this morning. Intentionally hardening our hearts will lead to our destruction. Every unrighteous person who deliberately had in his heart against the truth of the word of God. Who is bent on doing what he wants? Who hold the truth in unrighteousness? We have heard it again. Because they will not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. They deliberately refused. A payday is coming. When the Lord will repay all such people. Every unrighteousness in our lives, unrighteous actions, unrighteous thoughts, Unrighteous behavior. Anyone given up by God, we know where that person will land at the end. It's hell. Let be concerned with our spiritual state. Remember that. We are just strangers here. Let's ask the Lord. Every different attitude, indifferent to the word of God, unconcerned with all the alarm that have been raised this morning by God's servant, by our pastor, by our Father and the Lord. Are we still going to remain or concerned? No, it must not be, and it will never be. God has promised to cleanse by his blood every uncleanness in our lives. It is not what we can do on our own. He said he will do it himself. He will sprinkle clean water upon us. And we shall be clean. No matter we try on day and amen.
Let's pray honestly. He expects us to depart from every iniquity if it truly belongs unto him. We must deliberately flee every lust, every useful lust. Those things that will bring us back to the whole life. We must flee from them. Let everyone that named the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. And he's able to preserve us. He's able to keep us. Let's maintain a godly conscience before him. Don't let us quieten our conscience. Let that conscience be tender at all times. And the sign of tenderness is that as we have had the message this morning, we go to the Lord in all sincerity, open up our heart unto him and say, Lord, I want a change. I'm not yet where you want me to be. Or I've gone away from where you want me to be, Lord. Forgive me, my heart is becoming hardening. I don't obey your word like I used to obey before. I read your word now. It doesn't seem to have impact upon my life. I'm sluggish in carrying out your commandment. No more zeal. No more passion. No more commitment. Lord, touch this heart. Let this heart be tender towards your word. Let this heart be tender towards your rebuke. Let this heart be tender towards your correction. Exercising our conscience with that offer towards all men. We don't allow that conscience to prick us, it will soon become dead and be left to our own. Brethren, if there's anything we need to pray for this morning again, is the conviction. To be a man of conviction, a woman of conviction. A man, a woman with passion of conviction, for conviction. And we can tell the conviction of yesterday's years, are they still there? The commission of serving the Lord, obeying the Lord, evangelizing for the Lord, reading the, the word of God. Is it still there? The commission to stand for what is right, to stand on biblical principles. We want to go fast spiritually, we be told. We must be a man of conviction. Strong spiritual conviction. Strong moral conviction. A man of conviction is the one who stands by what God says, not what man says.
Let's pray this morning, Lord, give me that biblical conviction. And the psalmist said, I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Let's pray that conviction. Let's have that conviction this morning, Lord, as I live here. My whole life, not only just my tongue, my whole life, my thinking, my action, my behavior, everything, Lord God, will be in accordance with your word. The great privileges when we cleave to the Lord. Be uncleanness, and we are going to cleave to Christ. We go back to that principle. Others may, I cannot. In order we do, others may, I cannot. Because my Christ also permit me so. Because I'm a man of conviction. Cleaving unto the Lord. That nothing will separate us and Christ. No friend, no relation. We cleave to the Lord. We cleave to our Redeemer. Let's make up our mind. Anything, no matter pressure it is to us, that has made us to let Christ apart and, 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 and separate from Christ, let's tell the Lord we are leaving them this morning to cleave completely, totally unto the Lord. Having the same passion like the Savior, the same perception like the Savior, the same zeal like the Savior, the same commitment, the same consecration like the Savior. Let's tell the Lord, is this. We will act, we behave like Christ. We prove our consecration unto the law by walking as he walked, living as he lived, loving as he loved. We make up our mind. We will leave the uncommitted and cling to our captain. We leave that relationship, that friendship. That he make us to desert our captain. We will not allow any casual friendship to develop into an intimate friendship that will start to influence our lives. We set a boundary. We set a limit. Relationship with you. We cleave to the Lord. We abide in the Lord. And at the end, we be with Him in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we appreciate what you are revealed to us this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for the depth of your revelation. Lord, we ask this morning that any drag of, and we have been told clearly that any unclean thing will separate us from you. 
Lord, I am praying this morning that anyone still to come to a relationship with you, to know you as Lord and Savior. This morning, we surrender all unto you and be committed unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I doubt things that any of us will be dragging with you. We not totally cleave unto you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Father, help us, oh Lord God, to willingly, to joyfully, to cheerfully surrender all unto you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, God. We want to be men and women of conviction. You have taught us much through your servant in this church. And none of us can claim promise under any guise in Jesus' name. Amen. That Lord, wherever we are, we will shine for Christ. Amen. Wherever we are, the light of Christ will be seen in us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Wherever we are, Lord God, we carry Jesus to the place in Jesus' name. Amen. That those who have not known Christ and who feel that it is tough to live for Christ will see through us the life of Christ and desire to have that life in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we are asking you this morning that our own life we be consecrated unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. That you will walk in the full sense of the Lord from now henceforth in Jesus' name. Amen. That faithful servant from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As you live here, O Lord God, help us, Father in heaven, to live that life that you draw men and women out there from their sinful life and draw them unto the Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. For Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we pray that each time, oh Lord God, you open that scripture to read, to study, to prepare the message. Father, throw your life from above onto that passage and you will see clearly what he has ever seen in those passages in Jesus' name. Amen. As he's endeavoring to make us strong in the Lord. Lord, make him stronger. Amen. As he's endeavoring, oh Lord God, to make us to continue to be vibrant for the Lord, dynamic for the Lord. We pray for dynamic every day of his life. We take him higher and higher in Jesus' name. Greater strength, grant unto him. Greater knowledge, give unto him. Greater understanding, grant unto him. Greater wisdom from above, Lord, grant unto him in Jesus' name. You keep him healthy at all times in Jesus' name. Uphold him to the head, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Father, because you have answered us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.